me see if I can do some video setting changes so we can have the LCA. I should have my Red X hat. Yeah, where's your Red X hat, man? Wait, where's yeah. mine? I have my Red X mug, <laughs> which I'm going to go get in between this. So I'm giving an neither. error through Facebook send. Would you just uh, like to start now? Yeah, let's go. Let's get started. Tell me when it starts on Facebook and then we'll officially get started. But yesterday, um, Robert and Matt and Mark, I, so I did this, this 15 minute video and, and I played into YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, and multiple Facebook groups. And it was about, I started off with expireds and fizzbos and, and you, you saw that. And yeah, I loved so it. I loved it. I get, I get messages. Some people are like, oh yeah, I'm going to do it. I get messages like, where do I sign up? And then I get one message going, it was an amazing video except for the expired and fizzbo talk. I just can never do those. And I'm like, <laughs> like okay that's good that's fair that's fair yeah but uh, hey, the guys like me though uh, now that ad builder's coming out you can just run an ad against the expireds um it's going to be so cool and then you know if you don't want to call them at least you can run an ad to it it's another layer man it's another layer welcome back everyone we're live into i don't even know where but it's part of lab code <laughs> agents and i've got my co-host mark raider what's up mark What's up? How are we doing? And we decided to match shirts today. Sorry, Matt and Robert. We didn't tell <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, needed the memo. Sorry about that. Oh, by the way, I've got Matt Fagioli. We're going to talk about mindset. We've got Robert Sullivan with Red X. He's the CEO. He's the guy that makes all the good stuff happen for Dude, Red you X. Just got promoted. Congratulations. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I just let him say that. I, I'm just, I'm just my. You know what? Person. He's I'm not the cool, owner, but you creator. tell everybody. Yeah, like I invented it. He invented Red X. <laughs> He's also the engineer. He's one man team. It's amazing. I don't know how they do it. Uh, <laughs> well, we're going to talk about mindset. Matt, take it over. Cool. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, you guys, thanks for inviting me. And, and I, I've been telling Robert and Curtis um, uh, for months how uh, I've become just enamored with this idea of the five year mindset. And you know, there's nothing that we're going to talk about today that you haven't heard a million times, but just like everything else, it's always the execution. It's always, you know, stop. And can you actually do this? Right, Tristan? Dude, every time. Every, I had a whole conversation this morning on just mindset and it was, it was pretty enlightening, which I'll probably drop a few nuggets in there as we, as we start, as we talk. Cool. Sweet. Well, man, I just, you know, put some slides together to kind of prompt our, our conversation of how this goes. So I'll hit a couple slides and then, you know, you guys just jump in and, and let me know what you think. Um, I think first and foremost, to me, it's a business conversation, right? We're all, for the most part, the people watching this are in real estate, but we're certainly all entrepreneurs. And, you know, the, we're wrapping our, our efforts and our goal setting and everything around business. Um, but keeping in mind that, of course, it's got to drive your life. If you're running a bunch of business goals that aren't actually serving your life goals, then, then that doesn't matter. Right. Um, and, That's very true. Um, but in this, this five-year perspective, one of the things that happens is the bot. Oh. Did he freeze? Had the punchline too. And the secret of life is. Uh, uh, I know, happened. we just missed it. For everybody Matt, you want to have a million GCI? We lost you at the secret of life, buddy. You lost me at the secret of life? It's $200,000. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, you what a good jump. You and and $200,000. You missed the giveaway. Yes. Everyone who actually heard it. You know, <laughs> uh, but this is a cool tease, though. So it's on this call. If you make it to the end of the webinar, I'm going to show you how you can immediately get on a path to have $200,000 in the bank from the five-year mindset. So that's a little tease. Oh, I like that. Okay. Okay. So, I like that. so why the five-year mindset and what is the secret piece? That's what I call it. Um, that's where we're going to go here. Um, and just a couple more, you know, slides to frame it. You know, I love this idea that all the most elegant truths are always seemingly dead simple. You get on a call like this, you're listening in and you're like, what? I just took myself away from selling a house to hear this guy talk about this very straightforward stuff, right? But then you get off the call and you go get busy and there's no execution, right? 
So kind of kind of where we were. Um, and everything in your life, good or bad, comes from your thoughts. Um, man, I don't, you, you know, Tristan, you, you and I both train agents all the time. And even though this seems intuitive, you get away from it really, really quickly, right? You get down this rabbit trail of just bad stinking thinking. My one of my coaches used to call it stinking thinking. Good thinking. You know, like you're, oh man, that deal's not going to happen, or that guy's a jerk, or just like whatever it is. Even those two simple statements I just made seem so harmless, but thinking them and speaking them mm. is just so powerful. You know, um, it's so true, man. That's very true. I think and, a lot of us, a lot of us, even before we're calling expireds or for sale by owners or online leads, we're like, oh, this is, I don't want to do this. Or this is, you know, I'm waiting for people not to pick up the phone, right? We see that. So anyway, just yeah. Well, Robert and all the Reddix guys can can speak to what you just said is that you know, you get if you pick up the phone expecting bad things, man, bad things are are coming. Like there's, there's never been a better uh, school for positive thinking than prospecting, you know? Um, yeah, you, yeah. You got to hop on and, and you know, you know that people are going to say no. And you know that someone's that, that people aren't going to want to talk to you right away, but every no is, is one step closer to a yes. If you've got that right mindset, right. And, and, and if you've got the positive thinking going on, then you can get to the yes. I always tell my agents to celebrate the no's. You know, mm, let's, let's celebrate. Like, what do you mean? Because you're that much closer to getting a sale. You know what I mean? You're yeah. Closer to getting an appointment. Yeah, man. I heard I heard a really interesting kind of spin on that thinking uh, the other day that I had never heard before, and they were talking about accelerating failure um, <laughs> and like running toward failure because of that same model of like, man, I you know, if you go and you think you're not going to fail at all, like you're wrong. Right. So it's just mm. like running, push, 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 get to that fail. Cause that the next failure is one step closer to figuring out what's actually going to work. Um, so, yeah. So I kind of jumped, jumped the slide here, but the chaos, if you can see it upside down, there is um, what we all do in the short term. So back to this idea of, of, of the five-year mindset and, and trying to stay in it as much as possible, at least once a day for 30 minutes or something to stop and think about like, where is the goal? Where am I trying to get in five years before you run out into the chaos that we all, you know, you just can't help it, right? Everything's going on, deals are blowing up, phones ringing, stuff's happening, baby's crying, dogs are failing, you know, whatever's going on. It's all, it's always chaos in the now, um, but it's never chaotic in that, the 30 minutes that you're stopping and thinking about the future and thinking about all the positive, amazing things that can happen, um, there's no chaos there. There's no, there's no worry. There's no fear. Um, well, there shouldn't be. I guess lots, I guess you could still make it fearful, but it's a whole lot easier to put aside all your anxieties and fears and concerns when in that time when you're thinking out five years, right? The pressure is not there. It's just I'm thinking about what I want to make happen and, um, and it's just a much more peaceful place. And so the, the amount of hours that you could spend out there every day, the more peaceful your life's going to be. So I call that the secret piece. I'm going to pause okay. you right there because I, I want to, I want to add something to this. And I don't know that a lot of you listening and know, but if we look at the culture in Japan, you know, as I've been reading and and one of the people I interviewed brought this up to me. He said that Japanese companies often plan 100 to 200 years ahead. And I was like, no way. So I actually researched it after because I didn't know. And it's so true. And the idea behind it is the idea that you're bringing up here with the five-year plan. It's the idea of understanding your values, understanding what your priorities are, so that in a longer span, in between all of these little ups and downs, recession, depression, inflation, whatever happens, those values are set in place and you don't lose that, that vision of what's truly important. And I thought, you know, even though we live in a world that's a lot quicker in the way it changes, right, through social media, 
through globalization. That's really important. And I understand now why, even though Gary V says, look, 10 year plan, forget it, forget a 10 year plan, right? It's, there's a lot to it. There's a lot to it when you focus on the values of the company, right? And that needs to be done five year, 10 year, 20 year, whatever you want to do. And it's just look a lot further down so that you stay grounded. And I thought that was important, man. It's yeah. the secret piece. I like, I like that term secret piece because I Dude, think I'm, that sums it up. Tristan, I'm so glad you brought up the Japanese culture. I used to, in a previous life, I used to sell uh, Japanese products and yeah, their, their time horizons are ridiculous. Um, I actually really hadn't heard it in terms of hundreds of years, but I can believe it. But the company that I used to sell for uh, primarily uh, is a hundred years old, the company, um, and they definitely would always be talking in terms of a deck, you know, they'd be showing us a product and talking about a product that they weren't going to roll out for a decade. I'm like, dude, I need, I need to sell something this year, man. Um, <laughs> that's but, funny. It's amazing the time horizon, man. Um, so yeah, so that's very cool. Um, mm. And um, you know the the thing about the five year plan, you know, let's go back to the chaos, right? So we know we're all going to swim in this every day, no matter what. There's always going to be chaos in the day, in the now. But there's this subconscious pull that happens. Um, you know, I think all of you guys that are on this call have done some good solid planning in your life. And isn't it amazing? Have you ever had this, this happen to you where you stick the plan in the drawer and then you really don't spend enough time with it. But a year later you go back and you're like, you know, I'm kind of not that far off um, of what I was shooting for here. And, and, and I, I think that comes from this subconscious pull where I did some planning. I, I, my, somewhere in my brain, my subconscious knows that I, that I am trying to get to this, this place. And so even though you're running day to day in this chaos, you're kind of sort of still going there. It might be a little closer to the target if I had paid attention to those papers in my drawer a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can't tell you how many times I've gone back to a plan that I did a year or two ago. And what? you know what? That's not too bad. <laughs> Have you had that happen to you, Tristan? Dude, I, I have, and I think, I think it's just normal in the in in the progression of who we are because we're not always ready for some idea for some of our own ideas, hmm. right? And and then we come back to it after we've tested the waters and we're like, ah, oh, that's too much. And then like a year later, we're like, oh, now it just feels right right now. Mm -hmm. Oh man, you know that just brings up another. It's always a book reference, right? But. Uh, I read this really cool book a while back uh, called Visioneering uh, by a guy named Andy Stanley. Um, and it's a Christian book. And so his viewpoint was, a, a, you know, this sort of biblical godly viewpoint. But he, he was saying, hey, when you get these ideas, so you're inspired, whether you think that's God or the universe or however you frame it, mm -hmm. uh, but you get these ideas. But we all think that that means, oh, I'm supposed to execute that today. And, and the point he was making, the biggest point of that book that I took off was what kind of what you said, like sometimes we're not even ready for our own ideas or sometimes it's an idea that's going to bake for years, you know, and then all of a sudden you're going to roll it out and it's, you know, five years later and you didn't even realize the timeline, you know. So I think it's really interesting to sort of give us, give ourselves a break and go, you know, just because you didn't execute that in five minutes mm -hmm. you know, doesn't mean anything. Um, and if, and if you're thinking in these five year, you know, cycles and longer, that opens your mind up to think about these bigger ideas and bigger ideas take longer. Good idea, man. I like that. I took notes on that. So let me show you my next. So this is one of my favorite slides from Explode Conference. I don't know what this is, Tristan. No, it's a blank slate. You cut bum, off. Bum. <laughs> you cut off slate. for a second. I thought you were going to show me more money. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's coming. I got more money. I got more money for you, man. But um, but anyway, this is a blank slate. So, guys, if you're listening to this live or you're listening to the recording, um, take 20 minutes when this is over. Turn your phone off and think about this blank slate. Like you got five years 
to go. It's going to be, it's not July 1st, but it almost is. And you might be watching it on July 1st. So you got six months left of 2022 and you got the next five years to execute the biggest thing you can think of. Take 20 minutes and write something down and don't limit your thinking. Just write the biggest thing you can think like whatever you're working on. If you're an agent or a broker and you're like, you know, I want to sell 200 houses next year, or I want to sell, uh, or I want to recruit hundred agents or what, like whatever the biggest number is, don't hold your thinking back. Just write the biggest number down. You could possibly write down and then spend time, you know, every day, every week, um, figuring out how to get there. Um, but it starts by the, the most unlimited thinking that you're willing to scribble on the piece of paper and put the fear aside and go, you know, that's part of the thing that cracks me up about goal setting is like, we all want to like throttle ourselves. We're like, Oh, I can't really do that. I better, I better make it smaller, you know? And I think you do have to make goals attainable, but I think you have to start in this brainstorm place of just mm. as big as you can think, man. You I like know? that. Well, the, the challenge with thinking, thinking big or big er is the challenge that, that we have as humans to cope with uncertainty, right? Not being able to understand how it is that we get there. But I think what pulls us forward is just being able to visualize something that we may not know how to get there now, but starting to get comfortable with that thought of that possibility, I think then allows us scientifically, right? Through the particular activating system to start placing those things in our life that we can grab onto that can help us get there. Right. That, that I think is the key. Absolutely, man. And, you know, just being brave enough to think bigger on the first slide today, it said the box is always bigger than you think it is. And so what happens is if you're like, if you're doing 30 transactions and you want to do 50, you're like, man, that's a huge leap. I could never do a hundred. Mm. Well, you, you can, it's just, you've decided um, with your current set of practices and habits and thoughts that 50 is a, is a stretch. But if you actually spent five years, maybe it won't take you, maybe it'll take you one year, but if you spend some time th thinking through like, how can I get there? What, what, what would it take? What actions and habits and behaviors and investments would it take for me to do a hundred instead of doing 50? But the first step is just being willing to even think it and believe it, right? So big, big stuff. I agree, man. I love this blank slate. Yeah, everybody steal it, man. The best ideas are stolen, right? I spent the last 10 years stealing every idea I met. Uh, every person I met had an idea that I had to steal. And uh, it's the best form of flattery, right? So, uh, so 20 year dreams. So the reason that this is not called the 20 year mindset mm -hmm. is because 20 years is too long. And I think you said something about maybe Gary Keller said something similar. I don't know. But um, so, you know, we all have 20 year dreams where we're like, man, you know, what Robert was saying before the call, it's like, you know, I'm going to make this much money. And then I'm like moving to Tahiti and like, or whatever he said, and like, I'm, out. I'm done, I'm out. Right. <laughs> but, but it's like this, it's like this thing that, that might happen. I hope it happens. I dream that it happens, but, um, but it's way the heck out there. Right. And 20 years covers too many seasons of life. Right. So five years, I'm still kind of in the same season. So if you're in your early twenties and you're on this call, like you're brand new in business and you're in life. And you're like, I mean, I got to figure out my life late twenties, you're, you know, starting to have kids, maybe, um, you know, thirties, you're, you know, at a new place in your career and forties, you know, these, these big long seasons of life. And if you're looking out 20 years, you don't know what that looks like, right? I'm, I'm going on 55. And if you're watching this and you're 35, I promise you, you don't know what it looks like to be 55. You're probably like, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to know what it looks like to be 55. Um, but that's a different season of life. So that's why one of the reasons why the five-year thing is so powerful, because it's, this lo it's the longest possible horizon that's still in the same season of your life. Does that make sense? Yeah, makes total sense, man. Cool. So yeah, so literally everything can change in five years. And at my ripe old age, I don't know if you have experienced this too, Tristan, but it's like my life today does couldn't look more different than it looked five years ago um, in, a, in all, all good ways. 
Um, but you don't think that when you're, when you're doing one year goals, you don't think, oh my gosh, literally everything could be different. I, I could rewrite my life in five years if I wanted to. Yeah, I think we underestimate what, what can happen in five years. And we overestimate what we can accomplish in a year, right? And this is why, <laughs> yeah. this is why we give up a year later, right? And I think I'll give you a good example on me personally. When I created Lab Code Agents, it wasn't it wasn't to make money, and it wasn't it wasn't something that I thought was going to be small. I looked over to Jacob, and Jacob's here. I looked over over to Jacob when I created it, and I'm like, Jacob, we're gonna get to a hundred thousand, right? I didn't think it would take forever, right? But we got there. And he looked at me like, Jacob, I don't even know what the hell you thought when I said we're going to get to 100,000. We were at zero that day. <laughs> and, and it took me longer to get there. But on the way there, I wasn't ready for 100, 150,000 until I got to that next level slowly. And we don't realize that we have to grow. This is why, Matt, you're right. It's all of these little stages that we go through that prepares us for that next level of where we're heading to. And every single one of these stages are opportunities, right? And that's why I'm looking at the world that we live in right now on a business level. What are the opportunities? Because we're in transition again, right? And I'm thinking, well, let's take a look at this on, on a real estate level. The opportunities are well, let's go for the people that haven't sold their home or they're frustrated. Mark and I are about to take a listing because the home didn't sell in a month. The home didn't sell in a month. Whoa. Less than. Less than. The home, less than. <laughs> they're freaking out. It's rough out there. They're freaking out and they contact us. And so now we're going to take it over. And expired listings is coming back. It's making a comeback, wow. baby. So, you know, bringing, bringing this bigger picture into a smaller picture, just showing that the mindset that you have really allows for those opportunities in all of these transitions, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's right. And, and you know, uh, five years going specifically looking at the real estate business right now, I think that's a really realistic cycle to think about where we're going to be experiencing these higher <laughs> rates and, you know, maybe not buyer's market, but balanced market or whatever. And man, I read something this morning talking about assumable mortgages. I'm like, I haven't heard the term assumable mortgage in about five years. Um, oh, wow. But, you know, lots of, like you said, lots of changes coming. It's a great time to make a new plan um, for, for your real estate business and for, for everything. So um, super cool. So I want to share one more thing with you before we run out of time, because I really love Sorry to jump, guys. Ah, there it is. The Dreamcast. So you said, Tristan, like, let's bring this back to real estate. So here's how you make a five-year plan for real estate and make it as big as possible. Okay. Start with a, with a blank spreadsheet. This is just for one year, but you need, to, you need to do it for five years. And you put, again, the biggest possible numbers you can put in here. Put in your top 100 clients, put in every big deal you're thinking about working on. And this isn't a forecast. This is a dreamcast. So you're going to put it in there as if everything is going to happen. That's the, the starting point is everything is going to happen. Now, we, we all know that's not going to happen, but you start out with that and it will break the box of your thinking because when you calculate this spreadsheet, the number is going to be unbelievable. And you're going to go, holy cow, you mean if everything happened, I was going to do, you know, $500 million or whatever the number is. Um, but you'll be blown away by what's possible if you'll just allow yourself to think this way for a second. And I've taught this to a lot of people and more than anything else I've ever taught. Um, so many people come back to me like, dude, that just is like blows my mind. Um, and then, and then it also flows into a real forecast. And, you know, if, if lots of people come to real estate from the corporate world, like I did, but lots of people come into real estate without that kind of experience. And so they don't forecast like this. And when you forecast like this, 
what it does is you get up in the morning and you look at this document and you go, oh, I know everything I need to work on because I've brought it right back to the bottom line. Like what's supposed to close this month? Oh, uh, uh, Larry Stoner said he was going to buy a lake house in April. What do I need to do for Larry today? What, you know, do I need to send a listings or like, what do I need to do? But it like makes it dead, super practical. So anyway, that was the, the last thing I really wanted to make sure I shared with everybody because I'm so stoked about it. So mm. if you see this, guys, and you dig this and you and you decide to use the Dreamcast, uh, shoot me a message. I want to know. Matt, I'm, I'm so glad you skipped ahead to this because ever since you talked about the secret piece of why a five-year plan can bring you that, th this, is, this is what I've been thinking of. And I'm, so I'm glad you skipped ahead is that it informs your daily habits, right? Like, like if you... And, and it makes you feel good about what you do get to work on every day, even in the midst of all the chaos that you brought up. So this is, this is the Dreamcast. I love it. I love that that's where you get to once you have a five-year plan of like, I can feel good about the activities I'm doing every day because they align with my five-year plan. I love it. Absolutely. That's such a good point, man. I think a lot of the actions that we do, they don't often align with our values. And that's why we... That's why we sometimes lose track or we kind of go somewhere else, right? So I was talking to somebody earlier this morning. They, their book comes out soon. It's called uh, The Upside the Upside of Uncertainty. So Nathan Furr and Susanna Furr, um, they, they, uh, they write a lot for Harvard Business Review. And they're like, the, the difference between people that, that outlast others in businesses is that the actions that they take that surround the business that they run all surround around values, the values that help other people grow, the values that transcend money, the values that really bring people closer together. And I'm, I was like, dude, that's right on. Yeah, no doubt, man. And you know, all this stuff that we just talked about for the last 30 minutes, you know, it's so critical to, to balance it always against this filter of like, what is it that I'm actually trying to get in my life? Because it's not sales and money. It's that, you know, the money flows to whatever you're trying to accomplish in your life. You know, Robert's trying to get to Tahiti and, you know, uh, I'm trying to, you know, buy some more uh, animals for my wife's little farm here. Like I live to feed my wife's farm, whatever your, whatever your objective is, though. Very true, man. Very true. All right. Well, look, we're at the top of the 30 minutes, Matt, Robert, Mark, anything you guys want to leave us with? Because that last piece that you added, Matt, that was well worth it. Dude. That, I took notes yes. on that. Yeah. I, I, that's what I was going to say is that, that, I mean, you guys are people that I listen to not on a webinar. Like I'm like calling like, Hey, tell me how to live my life better. And so like this 30 minutes was awesome. I took notes. Um, I love wrapping it up into how, your bigger plans get down to your daily habits. And so thank you, Matt. Thanks for sharing that with everybody and, and for everything today. It was awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. absolutely Matt. Was I was going to say too, as well, I wanted to kind of like what Robert said, I wanted to kind of link back and just remind everyone, because I was reminded this actually on a coaching call I had um, last Friday, and that's literally stop, like you said, 30 minutes a day, even 20 minutes and just remember, okay, what can I do today to execute this small goal to get to that five-year goal? Because it's, 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 it's a little daunting sometimes if you think about the five-year, but if you break it down in bite-sized chunks, like you said, it's definitely much more attainable and easy. So I really like that. Man. I like that a lot. I agree. All right, Matt, how do people get a hold of you if they want to talk to you? Wait, did you freeze? You just have a happy face. I know. It was like... <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> well, we did put in the link for Red X, so... You guys jump onto Red X. Matt, you're back. If we want to get a hold of you, have questions for you, how do we do it? Uh, awesome. Uh, man, I'm Matt Fagioli everywhere. Facebook, Insta, uh, email, mattfagioli at gmail.com. Uh, so yeah, pretty. I'm the only Matt Fagioli. Well, there's only two, actually, my my young nephew and me. And uh, so I'm easy, I'm easy to find. But thanks, you guys. And uh, message me if I can help you in any way. I uh, appreciate you guys. Thanks, everybody. Later. Right.